The other week, we went to the Intel press event where they unveiled their new Panther Lake chips for laptops. It was such a cool event, and they even gave us this Lego version of their chip, which is a really odd gift. Anyway, it was great to catch up with so many other YouTubers in this space. There was a fab tour, which I didn't go to, but Sierra did. In fact, she spent two and a half days at the event, and I only spent one. So with that said, I'm going to hand over to her for everything Panther Lake. What are the highlights? Panther Lake is the replacement for Lunar Lake, which is Intel's premier processor for thin and light portable laptops such as the Yoga 7s and HP Omnibooks. These are the kinds of laptops used by students or those looking for a solid laptop for basic home or office use. Maybe they are doing some gaming or even light video editing on the side, as these do come with excellent integrated graphics. In fact, this new Panther Lake chip has quite a range of performance based on how much power is fed to it and which configuration you buy. Because of this, it is also likely to replace Intel's Arrow Lake 8. That is their processor for portable performance laptops. Many Arrow Lake H chips are paired with dedicated graphics, but we don't expect to see too much of that with Panther Lake, mostly because Panther Lake can come with a very powerful integrated GPU. In addition to the buyers already mentioned, Panther Lake is likely to be an excellent option for programmers, audio engineers, and anyone seeking CPU performance. Underneath the hood, Panther Lake introduces a new architecture for their processor, and the compute tile is built on Intel's new manufacturing process. It will be launching in mid to late Q1 2026, and the full announcement will be at CES in January. What are the main selling points? Primarily, Intel is claiming a 50% multi-core improvement over Lunar Lake at similar power draws. This is great, as the main gotcha of a Lunar Lake laptop was poor multi-core performance. If Intel is correct in their claims, this will broaden their appeal to buyers who want more performance. When compared to Arrow Lake H, their mid-range performance chips, Intel is claiming a 30% improvement in efficiency. So, similar performance for a lot less power, which could lead to much better battery life and less heat and fan noise. They gave us some very vague graphs, aka absolutely no units of measurement in sight, along with these estimated percentages. So I tried to plot Panther Lake where I thought it might fit on our existing performance per watt graph, so that we could compare it to the efficiency of existing processors. Here we've plotted a Cinebench score of around 800 at 20 watts, a score of 1100 around 50, and a score of 1300 around 70 watts. It's obviously difficult to make these assumptions based on their graphs, but we're guessing we'll see around a 10% increase from Arrow Lake H with a decent improvement to efficiency. These estimations would put it above AMD's Zen 5 Ryzen 9 HX3 70 chip at the higher end, but not by a huge margin. It still would not catch up with Apple M4's efficiency or performance here. Intel is also claiming a 10% improvement in single core over both Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake at similar power draws. There are three main configurations available. The first chip they confirmed is an 8-core version with four performance cores and four low-powered efficient cores, which is a direct successor to Lunar Lake. It has the same number and mix of cores. Then the two chips, which will be replacing Arrow Lake H, are both 16 cores, four performance, eight efficient, and four low-powered efficient cores. This is a slightly different mix of cores than the prior gen. They removed two performance cores in favor of two additional LPE cores. Then, between the two 16-core variants, one of them has a larger integrated GPU with 12 XE3 cores instead of the four XE3 cores of the other two. Both versions of the integrated GPU are going to be part of the Intel Arc B series, just like their dedicated Battlemage GPUs for desktops are. Intel naming never gets easier to understand. So, revisiting the multi-core claim from earlier, we got confirmation that it is the 16-core CPU in this graph, which means they are achieving a 50% increase from Lunar Lake at the same power draw because they are comparing it to the replacement chip for Arrow Lake, which is a higher performing chip. It's an improvement, but not as meaningful as it may seem. Their newest compute tile is built on a new process node called 18A. This is named for being 1.8 nanometers, which is tiny and a step forward for the manufacturing process. That makes those prior gains a little bit more disappointing. The Panther Lake CPUs will make use of both updated Cougar Cove performance cores and Darkmont efficient cores, including the low-powered efficient ones. Cougar Cove P cores are supposed to be better than the prior gen Lion Cove in four major ways. More reliable performance, better performance, better efficiency, and increased workload capacity. Some of these improvements are being achieved by better branch prediction and memory disambiguation. This means the chips are better able to allocate resources based on predicting future tasks and reduce system memory dependence. Darkmont E and LPE cores are meant to be better in these regards as well, while also improving responsiveness to varied workloads and accuracy refinements. 
This may sound like a bunch of marketing BS, and that's because it basically is until we can prove out these results with actual testing. Efficiency seems to be their main goal, though, which is being achieved not just with power throughput, but also better task identification and resource allocation. With these newer CPUs, Intel also claims that they've improved scheduling. Some examples they provided were office tasks, starting on the low-powered efficient cores, and then moving over to the performance cores once higher performance is needed. In tasks like Cinebench, all of the cores will be in use simultaneously. They said the general rule will be starting tasks on the lower-powered cores and moving them up a level if the needs of the task would be better served by the efficiency cores and then performance cores. However, they also noted that there is a cost to moving the tasks from core to core, so for short-running tasks, they will avoid that. The new XE3 graphics is a major aspect of the higher-end Panther Lake chip, which is why they showed us a demo of gaming on it, including multi-frame generation. This is similar to NVIDIA's, where up to three frames can be generated for every real one. This isn't free, as it does increase latency. But raw performance without frame gen is supposed to be 50% better than the integrated GPU in Lunar Lake. This might line up to something like a 6,000 graphics score in TimeSpy, where a Lunar Lake chip normally scores around 4,000. We had heard rumors that it might perform on par with a 4050, but that does not appear to be the case here, as 4050s normally score around 8,000 at higher wattage. This does get a bit closer to a low wattage 4050, like what we see in laptops like the MSI Thin, though, which only feeds its GPU 45 watts. This is still an impressive improvement, but not as much as we were hoping for, especially when competitors like AMD Strix Halo are out here competing with mid-range 4060s. I will admit the gaming looked pretty smooth, though. Panther Lake will allow for dynamic memory allocation to the GPU up to system memory minus 4 gigs, meaning it could be very effective for on-device AI. Total supported memory is 96 gigs of LP DDR5 or 128 gigs of DDR5. There will also be a new performance tuning capability called Intelligent Experience Optimizer that will automatically adjust clock speeds in balanced mode based on the intensity of the task you are doing, possibly eliminating the need for manufactured designated performance modes. This may feel like a stretch, but Apple has been doing it for years, so maybe Intel and Windows can finally eliminate the need to switch performance modes. For gaming specifically, Intel is implementing a pre-compiled shader download from the cloud for the games you play, which should help with gaming performance on Intel PCs. This is going to be backwards compatible with previous hardware as well. Some other improvements to these chips include improved wireless connectivity with Wi-Fi 7 R2 and dual Bluetooth 6.0 compatibility. This means they can take advantage of 6 GHz bands when available, monitor traffic to choose less busy signals, and also use your Wi-Fi antenna to strengthen Bluetooth connection via a second connection point. So, in conclusion, these new chips are primarily targeting anyone who doesn't need a dedicated graphics card in their laptop. New improvements to performance optimization should allow for better battery life when you need it and better performance when your tasks are more demanding. If you are a light gamer, these laptops may also fit the bill for you, as there are configurations available with decently powerful integrated graphics that can deliver playable frame rates at full HD resolutions. They did not do any demos of higher res output, but I'm sure we'll be able to test that once we get units in hand. We also believe you may see it paired with dedicated GPUs in thin and light gaming laptops, like what we've seen in the Zephyrus G16, where you have a dedicated GPU paired with Arrow Lake H. We assume the 16-core variant with the basic 4-core GPU will go in these laptops. Intel was a bit hazy on this, but what they did confirm was that Arrow Lake HX is sticking around for the most powerful laptops, larger gaming and content creation ones. This is similar to how they kept Raptor Lake 14th Gen HX around when Meteor Lake and Lunar Lake were launched. So the big question is, should you buy a Lunar Lake or Arrow Lake H laptop this year or wait till next year for Panther Lake? The best time to buy a laptop is November for Black Friday or December for Christmas. By far. That's when manufacturers try to clear stock before the new ones come in. Therefore, if you value your money and you want a laptop sooner, there are a ton of good Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake H laptops available, like the ones Seth and I both love, the ThinkPad X9. For light users, you probably won't need the performance of Panther Lake for many years. 
For those considering a small and portable laptop with an Arrow Lake H processor, if you are comfortable with a bit of warmth when the laptop's under load and plugging in your laptop more frequently, no need to wait. Grab a deal, and the best place to do that is on our website, bestlaptop.deals. It is going to be the hub for laptop buying this Black Friday and Christmas season. You'll see all our recommendations for specific types of buyers. We track sales right across retailers. We even have a price tracker and call out when the laptop is on its best discount ever. So here's who we think should wait for Panther Lake. First, people who want the latest and greatest. Panther Lake is more powerful and super efficient. Also, when a major new processor comes out like this one, we do expect manufacturers to introduce some new redesigned laptops. This could bring better haptic touchpads, better webcams, speakers, and so on. Second, people who want more battery life and less heat and fan noise from a small laptop with a dedicated GPU. For example, the HP Omen Transcend 14 is a lovely laptop with a decent dedicated GPU, but it does get hot when doing performance tasks. This will likely be improved with Panther Lake. Just know that you will be paying several hundred dollars more for this. Before you decide to wait and buy Panther Lake, though, think about what you specifically need from your laptop. If you're looking for a powerful, efficient chip and don't need to game, Apple's M4 series already offers very competitive performance and some of the best battery life on the market, and M5 is launching very soon. If you prefer Windows, the benchmark leaks from Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme look very promising. If true, these place them above their competition, so if they retain decent efficiency for that chip, it could be a game changer for Windows on ARM. But neither Apple nor Qualcomm offer the extended app and game compatibility that you'll find in the x86 space from Intel or AMD. So Panther Lake still seems like it's going to have a positive impact. Overall, I am cautiously optimistic about this launch. Intel is very important to a healthy ecosystem of competition, and the CPU seems like it will at least keep them competitive. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a big enough jump in performance to overtake AMD's or Intel's own higher-end HX chips, but that may be coming in a future update or refresh. There is still a lot we don't know, so get subscribed to see us cover the full announcement at CES next year. Before I go, I want to thank Intel for inviting me to this event. I got to meet so many other awesome techies, like the guys from LTT, DePoets, Level 1 Tech, Craft Computing, PC World, and a bunch of other smart folks. This was so fun, and I'm so grateful that this is my job. Thank you all for supporting the channel, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.